What if we could generate real-time artwork based solely on the images we are holding in our mind, just like how this voice prompt generative AI is doing here? Desert. Joshua Tree. Obvious is an art group based in Paris that is pushing the boundaries of what is possible with artificial intelligence and neuroscience. Last month, I went with my family to France to see their latest project called Imagine, where Obvious group members visualized imagery during MRI brain scans and had artificial intelligence create images based on the brain scan data alone. We'll see how these images have striking similarities to the visualization prompts they received while in the MRI machine and other custom built generative AI projects on display at the art gallery. To confront the commotion of time, the fungal outgrowth explore every corner of color. They have chosen to live, to trade their caps for the sky, which already crowns infinity. After seeing what Obvious has been working on, I can confidently say that we'll have the ability to project our mental imagery into artwork in the very near future with various brain scan devices. Paris, France. <laughs> It's a long way to Paris, especially when you have a toddler along for the trip. Vegas to Dallas, three hours. Dallas to Paris, nine hours. Luckily, my sister came along with us and was a huge help with the kiddo. Like typical Americans on the flight, my wife and I were wondering what the work-life balance of Paris was really like beyond the fashion and tourism industries. After getting settled at the Airbnb and catching up on some sleep, we soaked in the culture for a few days before my scheduled filming sessions with Obvious. We ate at coffee shops, did a river tour and saw the sights. And after a few days, I really started to feel like Paris is this impressive and dynamic mix of finance, history, culture, but especially science and entrepreneurship. And the more that I experienced the city, the more I found it possible how three artists with no formal neuroscience training could accomplish such groundbreaking work in brain-computer interface. Paris just felt like a place where it's natural for diverse minds with different backgrounds to collaborate and create something very new and unexpected. So after a lot of sightseeing, I was looking forward to getting back to work by meeting up with Pierre and Hugo at the Paris Brain Institute and seeing firsthand how they perform their AI brain scan studies and create the resultant artwork. What I propose to you? <laughs> We're gonna go to the hospital now. Yeah. <laughs> so Hugo is gonna join us, but here is the hospital where we do the MRI. Very tiring, your brain wears out, so you gotta pump yourself up ready for you, it. You have to do so, and all, uh, moreover, um, I'm the kind of guy who is sick in cars, you know what I mean? I got motion sickness, so my uh, internal ear is very sensitive, you know? It's for science. Yeah, and <laughs> art also. And, and art, art, sorry. Art. I sensed a definite camaraderie amongst the group members and science teams. They've been working together for a long time and it really shows. Because there's a lot of uncertainty in this type of work, but their shared excitement and optimism for the project is really palpable. And they need that because this work is not easy. Pierre got pretty uncomfortable and nauseous during the session that I was there. Hugo kept me company in the control room and I was really impressed with his knowledge about how the fMRI machine works and it was fun to discuss his workflow in feeding the brain data into artificial intelligence networks that the team has access to through the Jean Zay supercomputer of the French government. What you are seeing in front of you is the MRI machine that can scan your brain and create images to show its structure. The MRI machine can also track oxygenation of blood flow patterns in the brain as a person is exposed to different images, sounds, or words. The oxygenation patterns also change if the person imagines different images in their mind. 
In 2023, the team first set out to replicate work that other neuroscience groups had already done. They were shown images in the MRI machine and collected that brain scan data. They then had AI take a look at the brain scan data to very closely replicate images of what they had seen in the scanner from brain data alone. Obvious then took it a step further and created images from what they call weak imagination. They were prompted to imagine images that they had already seen in the past, but they only recorded brain data from their imaginations. From this imagination brain data, they were also able to reconstruct the images solely from their memory. In another step, they were shown text prompts that described sentiment and emotion, like imagine a portrait representing optimism. After having significant success with the emotion text prompts, they decided to truly take things into an artistic route. Now there's a form of artistic expression within the surrealism movement called automatic writing, where you allow your thoughts to flow freely from mind to paper without any editing or second guessing. From a neuroscience perspective, I see this as a form of flow state. Obvious then used snippets of their automatic writing to use as prompts within the fMRI machine for their mind to image project. The art pieces that you see in the gallery are images reconstructed by the AI based on brain data collected after Obvious members were exposed to their own automatic writing prompts. I sat down with the Obvious team and really marveled at the connection and correlation of themes between the prompts and the artistic expression of the AI within the artwork derived from their brain data. Hugo, can you tell us about this painting? So in this painting, uh, we imagined uh, some clouds. And so uh, this is one of the outcomes from uh, the algorithm. So basically we wrote uh, with automatic writing a few scenes. In the few scenes, there were uh, something about clouds. Uh, you can, so you can see in the automatic writing. And uh, then based on that, we tried to imagine something where there would be huge clouds, some kind of uh, storm as well. And, uh, and this is what came out. Okay, so this just blows me away. Honestly, because the way that you guys talk about this, it's like, okay, we imagined clouds and the, the AI read my brain and it created this picture. But just the fact that it's able to create this from you imagining clouds just baffles me. It's just amazing that that blood flow pattern is that precise that it actually can tell that you're thinking about clouds. So as part of the exhibition, there's also a set of portraits and the difference between the portraits and the landscapes, uh, the portraits are based on emotion. So from the uh, extracts, we took emotions rather than uh, some semantic stuff. And so these are what we imagined, uh, portraits making us feel some kinds of emotions. So here you have, like, for example, confusion, uh, love, uh, despair, uh, and so, yeah, the idea was uh, not to focus on someone with glasses, someone with uh, big ears or anything, but just uh, like a face that made us feel uh, something. We imagine things differently. Uh, some people have some methods to imagine and uh, some have others. Uh, for me, the, like the trick to stay focused on an image was to imagine a moving picture. So actually what I was imagining was more like something that was uh, kind of always moving and it helped me uh, keep the focus uh, and not kind of not lose the image and not think about something else. I was just like imagining uh, something probably more uh, photorealistic uh, and so I couldn't say that, that this is exactly what I, what I imagined, it would be a, a lie, you know, but still uh, what's impressive I find is that uh, it's not a real mushroom, you know, there's not like the cap, the big cap and the thing un underneath and still uh, it gives you the impression that it's a mushroom. And I think that's the, the beauty of it, you know, you get like kind of the, the mushroom f uh, feeling without actually having like exactly the right components at the right uh, spots, even though the colors, uh, they are not right, you know. Uh, and so that's the part where uh, it's like still uh, an approximation uh, and uh, that's also where uh, uh, surrealism uh, takes its part, you know, uh, and it's like uh, all mingled, like all the textures are uh, mixed together, and still you get like that impression that it's a mushroom. And so, in a sense, it works, but still, it's uh, not uh, like an exact representation of what I had uh, in my head. Yeah, when I think about neuroscience and shapes and patterns, to me, it would seem like there would be different blood flow patterns 
to imagining the gills of the mushroom or the white stock or the cap. And it's almost like it has captured all those elements of a mushroom, but rearranged them in a way that's uh, unique. So it's just amazing to see the AI take those patterns in your brain and recreate it, sort of toppled out on its head in weird colors. It's just, it makes for amazing artwork. As you can see, the correlation between the paintings and what they were visualizing in the MRI machine is fascinating. The Mind Image Imagine project is part of an overall portfolio of AI artwork that the Obvious group has been working on over the years. Hugo, Gauthier and I, uh, we met up uh, when we were very young uh, and basically started this whole journey together as, first of all, a friendship story. Um, today, uh, the reason we have you, Cody, in Paris is to uh, showcase our next our new project called Imagine. Uh, it's a show about uh, the uh, brain computer interface uh, story uh, and the idea of how we can uh, make people understand brain computer interfa interfaces and how we can do that through arts. I talked further with Pierre about his techniques for visualization in the MRI machine and his thoughts on teaching other people on how to do this in the near future. Imagine tank, uh, types of composition and then trying to make it focus on different points and make it m focus and focus and focus. And also something I discovered is that when I did that a lot of time, I was not starting from zero every time you know because if i go back and have the same question the same sentence i come back from my previous drawing in my head and trying to make it less blurry more uh, accurate more focused so it was a cool uh, way to learn how to picture in your head and i'm thinking i'm way better now that at the, ver at the very beginning of the of this whole project if you ask me right now to draw in my head uh, like a soccer ball for example i'm way better than i was before i think i could see some time in the near future fast forward where we've got some kind of wearable that can track blood flow patterns and you're an art teacher and you're teaching students how to do this i'm very looking forward about this this moment where we can as artists directly transcribe visual imagery. I mean, here we still use proxy, we use MRI machines, we use uh, machine learning algorithm and a lot of computing power, but the very near future where I can transmit you a vision, an artistic vision that I have in my head as I just told you about the soccer ball, you cannot see it. You know, you, you imagine what I see, but you cannot know. And I really look forward and I think it will be a very big leap in terms of artistic production, you know. To get an idea of where this technology is headed, we went downstairs into the basement of the gallery where Obvious had set up their custom voice to image display. By speaking a word into the microphone, the AI takes that as a prompt and creates real time imagery right in front of you based on your input. I was just fascinated by this as it created continual imagery that you could shape with your words like clay. You could stack up to three different prompts in a row to really shape on the screen what was happening in front of you. If you think this looks cool, imagine linking your brain up to something like this through a brain computer interface and having millions of data points from your mind determine objects, shapes, and colors all from your imagination and projected onto the screen in front of you. For now, the whole process is clunky. You have to rent time in the MRI brain imaging lab that's behind closed doors in hospitals and academic research institutions. You have to do many hours of training the AI on your own individual brain scans. Then when the AI algorithm is finally ready, you have to collect the visualization data and send it through the cloud to be analyzed by a supercomputer. Only then will you get the data back to be reconstructed by the AI into the artwork that you see in the gallery. Because the AI models have to be custom trained to individual brains, the whole process takes months and puts a lot of constraints on what I can do with a 10 day trip to Paris. I would love to train my own fMRI AI model at this point to create my own visualization artwork and report that on this YouTube channel, but I'll have to figure out some other way to do it back home where I'll have more time and flexibility. 
But the amazing thing is the science and technology needed to basically make this available to everybody is already coming to fruition in bits and pieces around the world. Various groups are developing high resolution FNIRs and ultrasound imaging wearables that will somewhat replace the large and expensive MRI machines needed to obtain the brain data. If you see how computing power is improving exponentially every year, what we call supercomputers now will be readily available to the public in various forms within 10 years and be able to calculate in real time the data from our brains and transmit that information into 3D artwork imagery to observe in various forms to include augmented reality. And artists will have a whole new set of tools through brain computer interface to create spectacles never before seen by humankind. As we finished up our family trip in Paris, I was consumed by the things that I had seen the obvious group do over the past week. My imagination was on fire. I can only hope that the tools that they are helping create will be used to create an exciting and fruitful future that my daughter can enjoy with the rest of her generation.